Welcome to or welcome back to the 510 Report where we talk about industry news, advocacy, and general goings on. And on a little bit of a personal note, I did just have three wisdom teeth pulled from my head. I'm still a little bit sore from that, so I'm trying to recover. So if I sound a little bit weird or look a little bit puffy, that's the reason why. But as they say, the show must go on. So I wanted to share something awesome before we get to some really bizarre, weird news reports. Weird news reports and weird legislation from Florida. Two of my favorite people and two vape advocates here in the industry, Eric, Vinyl and Vapor, and Danielle Jones. She goes by Rubber Ducky, you're the one on Instagram. Well, they have collaborated and they have made this awesome poster. That is a direct quote from FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb saying, if you could take every adult smoker and fully switch them to e-cigarettes, you would have a substantial public health impact. I think these posters are fantastic. I think Eric did an unbelievable job with them and they are for us to utilize. Us as vapors and us as shop owners. Danielle said, the DJ Vinyl Ducks collaboration is finally complete. Vinyl and Vapor and I collaborated on this project, which was inspired by the amazing Greg Connolly. To quote Greg, until FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb says otherwise, we're going to assume the agency is okay with vape shops, directly quote Quoting Commissioner Gottlieb's own words about vaping. Since vape shops are forbidden from talking about the health benefits of switching, Eric and I figured we'd make some poster designs that shops and businesses can download and print out to use as in-store signs. She provides a link to that in her Instagram bio, but I will also be providing a link to it down below in the description. The FDA has essentially had a gag order on the vapor industry since about August 2016. I actually think it was a little bit before August 2016. And she makes a note on this post to point out, please note business owners should be aware that it is still possible that the FDA could interpret this poster as a modified risk claim, which is not allowed. However, we feel that this is constitutionally protected free speech, enjoy and vape on. What I like most about these posters, it is completely, completely factually accurate. Scott Gottlieb is 100% correct. If you could take every adult smoker and switch them over to e-cigarettes, it would be a substantial health impact. I also love the irony involved of this being a direct quote from the FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb, yet Scott Gottlieb is one of the people standing directly in the way of letting this substantial health impact even happen. I love seeing hypocrisy in politicians. I love calling out hypocrisy among politicians. I think Eric and Danielle did an awesome, just awesome job with these posters. Like I said, they are for all of us to use, shop owners included, and I will have a link to the Dropbox down in the description of this video. So thank you, Eric and Danielle, for that awesome advocacy-ness. And now I wanna switch gears and talk about something that is just kind of boggling my mind that's coming out of Florida right now. This legislation in Florida is kind of just an example of what we are up against and kind of the weird, smarmy, backdoor ways that politicians get legislation pushed through. Amendment 9 is on the ballot for this November in Florida. And what they want Amendment 9 to accomplish is banning vaping in indoor working spaces. I personally don't think it's the government's job to ban vaping in indoor workspaces. I think that that decision should be left up to the companies and businesses themselves for them to decide what they are and aren't going to allow their employees to do on work property. But I think the craziest thing about Amendment 9 in Florida is the full title of it. Florida Amendment 9 bans offshore oil and gas drilling and bans vaping in enclosed indoor workplaces amendment. They're literally grouping together vape legislation that includes a ban with an additional ban on offshore oil and gas drilling. So you either have to say yes to both of these things together, or you have to say no to both of these things together. There's literally no way to vote otherwise. You can't say, yes, we want to ban offshore oil and gasoline drilling, but we don't want to ban vaping in indoor workplaces. I'm sorry that's not the way the government works. You have to be for or against both of these unique items. So if you are a concerned Floridian and you don't want them drilling for oil and gas offshore, then this is probably something that you're going to vote for. But by voting yes and banning offshore drilling 
voting for oil and gas. You're also voting yes to limit and restrict adult access to life-saving vapor products. And this isn't the first time we've seen two bills like this sort of lumped together, but I can't help every single time I see it, it literally just makes me scratch my head. I genuinely don't know how they get away with this. And this bill actually gets a little bit more wordy with the vaping verbiage than it does with the offshore drilling verbiage. As far as the offshore drilling goes, they basically just say, yeah, if you vote yes on this, there will be a ban on offshore drilling. Very simple, very, very cut and dry. But for the vaping portion of it, they do go into a little bit more detail. Amendment 9 would prohibit the use of vapor generating electronic devices in enclosed indoor workplaces. The measure would make exceptions for the use of vapor generating electronic devices in private residences that are not going to be used for commercial child care, adult care, or health care. In retail, tobacco, and vapor generating electronic device shops, designated smoking guest rooms in hotels, and standalone bars. Which were all probably thinking doesn't sound that bad, right? Personal residences are exempt. Designated smoking areas and standalone bars would be exempt. And it sounds like retail, tobacco, and vapor shops would also be exempt from this. It goes on to say, Amendment 9 would define vapor generating electronic devices as any product that employs an electronic, a chemical, or a mechanical means capable of producing vapor or aerosol from a nicotine product or any other substance. The definition would include electronic cigarettes, electronic cigars, electronic cigarillos, electronic pipes, and other similar devices or products. Replacement cartridges for such devices and any other containers for a solution or other substances intended to be used with or within the devices. So much more information in this bill about vaping than there is about the offshore drilling. My opinion is obviously this Amendment 9 is going to get passed because who's going to vote for offshore drilling? And when this does go through, yes, they will have banned offshore drilling in Florida, but they also very sneakily just took a little bit of your freedom away. And that to me, I think is the scariest part about Amendment 9 in Florida. So shifting gears slightly from that, last week we talked about Greece and how Greece is really very intently going after vapor products, making the claims that there is zero difference between combustible burning tobacco products and less harmful vapor products. So it's not really a huge surprise that the latest study from Greece is very, very anti-anti-vaping. Before we really dig into this article and get all sorts of ragey about Greece, I did want to play this real quick clip. It's a really important clip. It's definitely going to keep this video from being able to be monetized, but I have no choice because I think this is a fantastic preface to what we're about to read from Greece. This is a clip that Vaporizzo posted on Instagram from MP Norman Lamb. This is all about harm reduction. Nobody's saying it's completely safe. But if you take the evidence seriously of Public Health England, the British Heart Foundation, Cancer Research UK, the British Medical Association and many more bodies who all say that vaping is significantly less harmful than smoking, I think we should be following their advice. 79,000 people in England alone die from smoking every year. And when the available evidence now about the harmful chemicals in cigarette smoke compared to vaping points very clearly to a lower risk, surely we should be following that advice and surely we should be grabbing the chance to save lives by stopping people smoking. Regulation and taxation should all be based on an assessment of risk and when we know that e-cigarettes appear to be significantly less harmful then surely the regulatory framework should reflect that. So with that clip in mind, let's take a quick look at what the researchers at the University of Athens recently discovered in their study. And I also just wanna point out that this particular article came from Yahoo Sports and was written by a Yahoo style editor. So according to this article, researchers compared several groups of mice that received whole body exposure to varying chemical combinations four times each day with every session separate Separated by 30 minute smoke free intervals. These results were published in the American Journal of Physiology Lung Cellular, and the conclusion that they came to is that exposure to e cigarette vapor as well as combustible tobacco smoke can cause 
inflammation. Inflammatory responses and adversely affect respiratory system mechanics. The doctor behind this study said, we conclude that both e-cig vaping and conventional cigarette smoking negatively impact lung biology. Now I'm not going to sit here and try to debunk this entire scientific study. Vaping is never intended to be 100% safe as in the clip we just saw, it is intended to be harm reduction. I don't think it's unreasonable to think that they may have found something in vapor products that can impact lung biology. The real question we should be asking is on what scale does it impact lung biology? We know beyond a shadow of a doubt how bad tobacco is for you, how bad burning combustible tobacco and inhaling the smoke is for you. Thousands and thousands of chemicals in tobacco cigarettes and hundreds upon hundreds of carcinogens in them. And I'm certainly not discounting the science that electronic cigarette vapor could trigger inflammatory responses in your lungs and affect respiratory system mechanics. Obviously inhaling nothing is much, much better for you than inhaling something. The question with vaping should never be, is what we are inhaling really bad for us? The question with vaping should be, how does what we're inhaling compare to traditional tobacco cigarettes and their thousands and thousands of chemicals and their hundreds and hundreds of carcinogens? And this study from Greece obviously falls right in line with that country's train of thought in that there is no difference in their eyes between traditional combustible tobacco cigarettes and much less harmful vapor products. At least that's how this story is being portrayed in the media. Now I'm going to be linking down in the description to both this article from Yahoo and the actual study that was done at the University of Athens in Greece. I am not a scientist. I am not a doctor. I never claimed to be either of those things. But just from my time, that I've spent with this study, there are a few things that don't quite add up and I would like someone who is much smarter than myself to actually take a look at this study. Because if I'm reading this correctly and I'm not honestly sure if I am, but if I am reading this correctly, the study does say what they did as far as exposing mice's bodies to vapor as well as cigarette smoke. They did find that the vapor from e-cigarette products did trigger inflammation in mice, which thankfully we are not mice. But there is one really interesting sentence in this that I can't stop focusing on. It says, while after four weeks, cigarette smoke was the only treatment adversely affecting these parameters. We conclude that both e-cig vaping and conventional cigarette smoking negatively impact lung biology. So does the vapor from e-cigs only negatively impact lung biology for the first four weeks? And then after four weeks, only cigarette smoke affects that lung biology? Could it be that the e-cigarette vapor affected lung biology in a less harmful way? Could it be that despite how this particular study was presented by the media, that it actually supports the notion of tobacco harm reduction through vapor products? Again, if anybody smarter or more schooled than me is willing to read this study, I would love to talk to you about it. I've said this before and I will definitely say it again, but at the end of the day, if you're not comparing vapor products to that which is causing us harm, then you are not doing your due diligence. And I think that's where we're gonna leave this 510 report today. As always, I will have links down in the description for you to utilize and read and research on. And before we go, I just wanna say join CASA. It's free and easy to sign up if you wanna stay aware about possible bad vape legislation happening in your particular city, state, or area. Join CASA and follow those calls to actions. And as Kevin Skipper always used to say, you don't have to do everything, but you do have to do something. Let's get involved. <laughs>